Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find various probabilities having to do with flipping two fair coins. If you find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Ms. Hearn Mathematics, to see some more math videos. The problem that we're looking at says two fair coins are tossed, say a dime and a quarter, although that doesn't really matter. The two possible outcomes for a single coin are heads H and tails T. Give each of the following. A the sample space, B the probability of heads on the dime, C the probability of heads on the quarter, D the probability of getting heads on both, and E the probability of getting the same outcome on both coins. So either both heads or both tails. So before we can work this problem we need to understand what a sample space is which is just a, a list of all possible outcomes and we need to know the definition of theoretical probability. This falls into the category of theoretical instead of empirical probability because this is not a situation where we're going to flip coins a bunch of times and count the number of outcomes and come to a conclusion about the probability that way. This is based on the assumption that outcomes are equally likely. So we're equally likely to get a heads on the quarter as we are to get a tails on the quarter. So in that case, the probability of an event is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So with that in mind, let's think about part A, the sample space. So to help you understand what we're asking for here, I have a nice little picture that shows the different possibilities when you flip a quarter and a dime. Farthest to the left, we see the possibility that we get a heads on the quarter and a heads on the dime, which we're gonna represent as HH. I'm going to always list the quarter first and the dime second. The another possibility is that we get heads on the quarter, but the dime turned out to be tails. We can represent that with HT for heads than tails. Another possibility is that we get tails on the quarter and heads on the dime. We can represent that as TH for tails than heads. And finally, they could both be tails, which we can represent as TT. This set of outcomes is our sample space. Notice that there are four outcomes in our sample space. And each of these outcomes is equally likely since we have fair coins. So now let's use this knowledge about our sample space to answer the other parts of the question. For example, in part B, we're asked to give the probability of getting heads on a dime. Remember, probabilities are the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. We already know the total number of possible outcomes is four. We just need to figure out how many of those outcomes are favorable to having heads on a dime. So here I'm going to use the diagram again and I'm just going to circle those outcomes that have heads on the dime. There are two ways that that can happen. Heads on the quarter, heads on the dime, or tails on the quarter, heads on the dime. So if I want the probability of having heads on the dime, which you can write like this, P parentheses, heads on dime, we would have to say two favorable outcomes, two ways to get heads on the dime, divided by the four total possible outcomes. Now in probability, we do like to reduce fractions to lowest terms. So two fourths is the same as one half. If you've forgotten how to reduce fractions, you can always reduce by dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. That will result in an equivalent fraction. Now, normally we don't have the diagram with the quarters and the dimes. So how would we answer this question without it? Well, that's where our sample space we found in part A comes in. Remember, we have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. The first in each pair represents the quarter. The second in each pair represents the dime. So if I'm looking through my sample space, anything that has and H in the second position is heads on the dime, and that happens twice. So again, we could conclude that there's two-fourths probability, or one-half if we reduce to lowest terms, of getting heads on a dime. Now let's look at part C. It says give the probability of heads on a quarter. 
This time let's do it completely without the diagram. So we're just going to use the sample space. Remember it's always quarter first and then dime. So when we're looking for heads on a quarter, we're looking for the first letter in the pair to be an H. Heads on the quarter happens here and here. So again, there are two favorable outcomes where we have heads on the quarter out of the four possible, two fourths reduces to one half. So the probability of getting heads on a quarter is one half. Let's try another one. Part D, give the probability of both being heads. So that means both the quarter and the dime are heads, which means both of the letters have to be H's. So the only favorable outcome in our sample space for that is HH. -H. There's only one favorable outcome, still four possibilities. So our probability of getting both of our coins to have heads on them is only one fourth. And lastly, part E, give the probability of the same outcome on both coins. Well, that would mean that we could either have heads, heads, where they're both heads, or we could have T, T for both being tails. So we see that that happens here and here. So the probability is going to be two favorable outcomes out of four possible. Again, that two fourths reduces to one half. So the probability of the same outcome on both coins is one half. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. I also invite you to subscribe to my channel and leave your comments below.